In this video, you learn all about triads on guitar and how they will totally transform the way you play chords on the instrument. Triads open up the fretboard to you, providing you with far greater options when it comes to playing rhythm guitar parts. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson, you learn the major and minor triads on the top three strings of the guitar. You'll first learn each shape in isolation before I show you two key ways to train triads so you know instantly where they are on the fretboard without having to think at all. This involves learning triads first by shape and then by position. Both training methods combined will ensure you get the triad chord shapes down so you can easily access them to use in your own guitar playing. So let's get to it. Okay, so triad shapes. What are triads? They are three note chords. You can have major triads, minor triads, diminished triads, and augmented triads, essentially. We're gonna look at the major and the minor triads, and they open up the whole fretboard to you. When you just know, um, you know, open chords and bar chords, as useful as they are, and of course you wanna know them and need to know them to play a guitar and a lot of songs and so forth, triad shapes will really help you understand chords more. Bar chords and open chords don't really do much to really um, help your understanding of how chords work on the fretboard. Triads well. We're gonna play C major triads here on what we call three, two, one triads because the notes of these triads are gonna fall on the third, second, and first strings. So we call them three, two, one. And this first triad is this shape. That's a C major triad and it's in root position. And what that means is the root note C is the lowest note in the triad. So it's in root position, okay? And that's our first triad shape. Now we can move up a little higher on the fretboard and get what we call a first inversion triad. The first inversion triad is when the third of the chord, the E note in this case, C, E and G, are the three notes in C major. So the third of the chord, E, is the lowest note in the chord. Okay, that's a, that's a first inversion triad. And C in this case, C first inversion. And then we go up a little higher again, and we get a second inversion triad, C as well. You can hear they're all the same chord, right? Um, the second inversion triad is when the fifth of the chord, C, E, G, is in the bass, which it is here. You might recognize this shape, of course, as a D open chord shape. Well, those three fretted notes from that D shape are an actual triad can be moved up and down the fretboard. So again, we've got C major in root position, and then we've got C first inversion, second inversion, back down. Okay. Um, now you wanna know where the root note is in each of those triads. So here it is, lowest note in the root position. For the second inversion, sorry, the first inversion, it's the highest note, it's on the first string. And in the second inversion, it's on the second string. So it's a different string for each shape. Third string here for root position is where the root note is. Top string, first string for this inversion triad. And the second inversion triad, there it is on the second string. Why do we want to know where the root note is? Because then we can move those triads to different chords. So if I was after an E root position, I'd know the root notes on the third string, find the E, form the shape there's E major triad. If I wanted an E second inversion, I know it, that the root note for the second inversion is, is on the second string. So that's where I would find to build the second inversion off. And if I want the first inversion, E triad, E's on the top. Okay, so the root note's an important note to know where it is in the triad shape because that will allow you to move it to different positions and we'll see that come into play very shortly. We can change, we can take each of these major triad shapes and make them minor. So instead of going, well, here's three completely unrelated new shapes to learn for minor, C minor in this case, we don't want to do that because the major and minor chord, there is only one note difference. The third is flatted in the minor. So if I grab this C major triad and I flat the third, there's my C minor triad root position. The third has moved down one fret being flooded to E flat. So we want to see sort of those two shapes. They are different sounds, of course, but they're kind of a pair, if you like. Here's the major root position, here's the minor root position. So they're actually good to play back to back, so you kind of pair those up forevermore. Here, the third is in the bass of the first inversion C. We move it down one fret, 
and we get the minor, which now means we can bar all three strings in the eighth fret in this case, because we've got this third E moved down to E flat to join the other two notes already there in the eighth fret on the first and second strings. And we can pair those up. There's the major first inversion, here's the minor first inversion. And then we've got the D shape, but it's a C chord, second inversion. And the root note is on top, so you've got to, not the root note, sorry, the E that we want to flat to make it C minor is on top, first string. Now you're not going to be able to really comfortably get that second finger to move down to the 11th fret and keep the first finger on the 12th fret. So you've got to re-fret that chord a little bit to accommodate the E being flatted on top. And you should notice that, of course, you've got a D minor shape because you've got D major down here, D minor. Well, that's reflected up here too. Only it's a C chord here and a C minor. Okay, so your three minor shapes. Well, let's let's actually just quickly touch on each major and minor. So here's major root position, major first inversion, major second inversion, all C. Then here's C minor root position, C minor first inversion, C minor second inversion, and as I was touching on before, a great way also to play these would be the both inversions of each major and minor first before moving to the next position. So C major, root position, C minor, root position. You can see how they relate. You can see there's only one note difference. Then C major, C minor, first inversion. Again, just the one note difference. And C major, second inversion, and C minor, second inversion. And again, just the one note difference. And then you could go around and find different chords all about knowing where the root note is and then you'll be able to do that. It takes a little time. No one just learns triads in one moment and then has them completely down in the next. It takes a little bit of work but it's the way you go about it that will have a big say in how well you do get to know these triad shapes. Okay so these triad shapes are fantastic for developing more uh, ideas for you and opportunities as far as rhythm guitars playing, rhythm guitar playing is concerned but they're also equally as good for soloing. It's kind of beyond the scope of this lesson to go into the application of how to use these triads, really, but I'll, I'll do another lesson on that um, to, to help you see just how useful these triads will be for your playing. But just think, you can now play C, not just here, and here, and here, as Doc's in a bar chords and an open chord, you can now play them here. And that's only on string set three, two, one. You can play the same triads on three, two, and, and the other string sets that multiplies further. So it's certainly much more than what you just seen here, but this is a great start. So work with those shapes. And now I'm going to show you how to train them so you can just grab them whenever you want and get some really cool sounds. Okay, so now you've got a bit of an idea of the three, two, one triad shapes, both major and minor. Let's have a look at a way that we can train these. There's two ways, by shape, by position. By shape is the first one to do, the easiest one, and an important step to then do by position. So let me explain. We're going to take a very common stock standard chord progression in the key of C. It's going to be C, it's going to be G, it's going to be A minor, and it's going to be F. The old 1, 5, 6, 4. Okay. Now, by shape means take one shape, for example, the root position, and voice out that chord progression. So I'm going to play C major. The next chord in my progression was G, so I need to use the same triad shape, by shape, the root position as a G, which would take me up to the 12th or 10th position with the G 12th fret 3rd string. Remember where the root note is in the triad shape is how you move it to different keys, how you can find different chords with it. The next one was a minor, okay? Um, it was A minor in the chord, in the progression. So we move up to A, but remember it's minor, so you've got to play the minor shape. So if you know how the two shapes pair up, you'll know which is the root position minor shape. It's only going to be two frets above the G. And then we're back to the major shape as an F, which takes us to the eighth position. So you can hear that progression right here. It was in the open position, just open chords, A minor and F. Here it is with the root position chords. Okay, you could even imagine picking something out on the triad shapes while someone is playing the open chords. Right? 
one of the uses that you could, you know, applications you could do with triad shapes. Really nice additional parts on top of a chord progression. Someone else strumming the chords happens all the time in the music you you hear. And then we could take another shape, the second shape, the first inversion, and use that shape to voice out the progression. So same progression, same chords, different triad shape. C. So we need a G. Remember the root note for this shape, the first inversion, is on the top string. So here's G. Here's the first inversion G. Then we had the minor, A minor. So first inversion, but the minor shape for the first inversion, where you drop down one fret. And then F, first inversion. So that is C, down to G, to A minor, to F. And then we can take the third um, shape, being the second inversion, and we've got C, and the root note is on the second string. Then down to G, there's the G on the second string, then we need the minor, second inversion, so that's like the D minor open chord shape, is how we can remember that one, as an A minor here, and then F, okay, so same shape, so we're doing it by shape, or even by sort of, yeah, by shape is, is the, the term we'll use. Okay, now notice when we do play with just the single shape for the whole progression, we're having to move up and down the fretboard a bit, right? We're covering quite a bit, bit of ground. Whoop, there. We're covering quite a bit of ground, which is fine. I mean, we do that with bar chords a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. But we can get some smoother sounding voice leading, meaning the way chords switch from one to another, very smooth ways, um, by playing by position. And this is a great way to get to know your triad shapes much better on a deeper level. So what do we mean? If I start with the same chord progression, right? We're going to play the C, the G, the A minor, the F. Same chord progression. I'm going to start with root position C. Okay, that's fine. Now, instead of using the same shape, I want to find the closest G chord. G is the next chord in the progression. I want to find the closest G chord, which happens to be right there as a first inversion. There's C, there's G. Okay, that's a little smoother in terms of the voice leading versus that. There's nothing wrong with this. This is okay. This is a bit smoother. Okay, you could do either. There's no right or wrong here, but you don't want to sort of just do, um, you know, this big leap because you have no other way to do it. You want to have options. And one option is to stay in the position and play the first inversion G. Now you want to find the closest A minor chord for where you're at. Um, because that's the next chord in our progression, which is here. First inversion, A minor, and then second inversion, F, will be the closest F. So see how they're all kind of stacked in the same area here. C, G, A minor, and F. And you'll notice some of the chords have common notes, so they don't actually change, and others are really just moving by a fret or two. So it helps you see how chords relate more as well when you play like this. So there's lots of multiple benefits you get by doing this. You know, so listen to the difference. Again, uh, if I just play it with the one shape, the root position, we have this. It's okay, but by position. And I forgot there for a moment. So you see G, A, really nice, smooth voice leading. And then you could go up to the next C, first inversion, play it, and then find the closest G, which would be this one. What's the closest A minor? Closest F? See, notice with the A minor and the F, there's only one note difference. So it's showing you how an F and an A minor relate. One note, okay? And very smooth. And you could go up further again to the second inversion C, and now you want to find the closest G there which is root position, then the A minor and the F. Okay, first, uh, second inversion C, root position G, root position A minor, first inversion F. Okay, so now you've got three different positions based off each of the three triad shapes to then play the chord progression. So of course, here it is in its original form, C, G, A minor and F. We have those three stacked positions, if you like. C, G, A minor, F, or C, 
um, G, A minor, F, and C, and G, and A minor, and F. Look at all that variety in chord voicing and voice leading that you've got. Nothing like you would have if you only knew the open and bar chords, okay? So you should see lots of possibilities that are happening there. Um, and I will make some more videos if you like. And if you, if, you, if you do want to see more videos on triads and the actual application and ideas with triads, like how can we use this to, to make some cool stuff, um, drop a comment below and let me know. And uh, I will definitely make that video. It's just a bit beyond the scope of today's video. It's all about visualizing the shapes on the fretboard. Okay, maybe you've come across triads before. Well, maybe you haven't come across this way of working with them. Um, but when I'm ever working with chord shapes, new chord shapes that I want to get into my plane, I do this sort of stuff. I just take any progression I can find and voice it out with the chords I'm, I'm currently learning. And I'll do that lots and lots of times over a period of time and get to the point where I just know that chord really well. So that is a great way to train with triads, the three, two, one triads on your guitar. If you like this lesson, then you'll love this free ebook audio I've created for you about using fragments of chords to solo with on your acoustic guitar. Of course, chords are thought of in the context of rhythm guitar playing. However, have you ever considered them for soloing? In this ebook, you learn five unique ways to use chord fragments to solo with on your guitar. Chord fragments allow you to create a great dynamic with the contrast of single notes to chords in the lines you play. All examples in the ebook have been broken down into the finest of detail so you can not only play them but understand what is going on so you can use chord fragments in your own guitar solos. So click the link below the description of this video and download your free ebook audio how to improve your acoustic guitar solos by using these five cool and easy tricks. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and always love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.